Hello everyone. Uh, in this short clip, we are going to talk about the coronary arteries. These are very important anatomical structure which are related with the heart, with the topic of the ECG and with cardiac problems. So this is very important to understand what are the coronary arteries, which wall they are supplying. Those wall are represented by which set of the ECG leads. This is how you can track down the problems in the coronary arteries. And at the end of the video, if you like this video, you need to share it. And I request you to subscribe the channel and also press the bell icon. This is the only way to improve and grow this channel. Because in this video, our main focus will be on the coronary arteries and also uh, where, which wall these coronary arteries supply and what are those uh, ECG leads which represent them on the ECG paper. Now, if you try to focus here, uh, these uh, coronary arteries, these have got their origins from the aorta. These coronary arteries, they are arising from the aorta at a level uh, just outside of the aortic valve. And other than this fact, there is another very important fact which we all should remember that these coronary arteries, they are filling during the diastole but not during the systole because they are within the, uh, they are running within the muscles of the myocardium or muscles of the heart. So they, they get filled during the diastole, not during the systole. Now, if you look here, uh, just outside of the aortic valve, this one uh, is uh, on the right side and it is known as the right coronary artery. In 70% or a little above 70% of the cases, right coronary artery gives off this very important branch which we call the posterior descending artery and this is what makes it, it the dominant uh, coronary artery because this posterior descending artery then will supply the uh, septum of the heart. This right coronary artery also supplies uh, part of the septum. It also supplies the AV node, SA node and the inferior wall. So it makes it a very important artery because if there is a thrombus or any problem, it can affect not only the septum and the inferior wall, but it can also affect the uh, cardiac conduction system. Now, other than the right coronary artery, there is a left main stem. So many times when we talk about or when we read about the coronary artery bypass graft, one of the main indication will be if there is a thrombus in the left main stem. This is that part of the uh, left circulation in the coronary uh, system. This is the left main stem, then it subdivides into the left circumflex artery. Why we call it circumflex? Because it has got an acute turn on the left side. This is known as the LCX or the left circumflex artery and in a little less than 30% of the cases, posterior descending artery has got its origin from the left circumflex artery. In all those cases, it will become the dominant coronary artery. And other than the left circumflex artery, from the left main stem also arises the left anterior descending artery. Now keep in mind, as inferior wall was being supplied by the posterior uh, right coronary artery, lateral wall or, or lateral part of the uh, anterior wall of the left ventricle is supplied by the left uh, circumflex artery and when it has got the posterior descending artery coming off from it, it will also supply part of the septum, especially the posterior uh, part of the septum. So left circumflex supplies the lateral wall and another branch which comes off from the left main stem is the left anterior descending artery or LAD, it, so short, it sort of falls down, it descends on the anterior wall and it supplies the major part of the uh, anterior wall of the left ventricle. So the uh, all in all the coronary arteries uh, comprise of the right coronary artery which supplies the inferior wall and left circumflex artery which supplies the lateral wall and left anterior descending artery which supplies the major portion of the anterior wall. Now there is a very interesting uh, aspect of knowing the coronary arteries the wall they supply and there are certain sets of the ECG leads which are representing that particular wall on the ECG paper. That means 
if we can identify the changes in a particular set of the ECG leads, then we can identify which wall is affected and obviously we can track it back all the way to the coronary arteries which is incriminated, which has got the thrombus, which has got the problem. So just by looking at the set of the ECG leads, we can identify the culprit coronary artery. For example, uh, right coronary artery supplies the inferior wall, but that inferior wall on the ECG paper is being represented by the leads to 3 and AVF. And if you notice here, the left coronary artery, which, which was supplying the lateral wall, but that lateral wall on the ECG paper is represented by the leads 1 and AVL in combination. And if we look at the left anterior descending artery, it was supplying the anterior wall and that anterior wall on the ECG paper is being uh, uh, represented by the uh, chest leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. And the general rule is that all of these sets of the leads, at least two of them should have that change for, to qualify for the representation of the uh, culprit artery and the wall. For example, if it is a change in the uh, left, uh, left circumflex artery, both the lead 1 and AVL should have that change. But in uh, case of the right coronary artery, either of the two like lead 2, 3 or lead 2 and AVF or lead 3 and AVF, two uh, leads, we call them the consecutive lead. One is a consecutive lead of the AVL and 2 and 3 and AVF they are consecutive leads. So out of the six chest leads, at least the change should be present in the two chest leads. So for example, if a change is in the V1 and V2, we will say something is something bad is going on with the left anterior descending artery and the wall, which is the anterior wall, is showing that change is being represented by the uh, leads uh, uh, on the ECG paper. Finally, if you can uh, break it down even uh, to a further lower level lead 1 AVL V5 and V6 if you recall their anatomical positioning you will remember that these are the anterolateral leads 1 and AVL are purely looking at the lateral lead V5 and V6 are a lateral wall and V5 and V6 they are looking that part of the interior wall which is on the lateral side so all in all we say 1 plus AVL plus V5 and V6 if we, there is a change in it there is a change in the anterolateral part of the myocardium V1 and V2 they are located on right in front of the uh, interior wall but more towards the septum so they are right rightly called anteroseptal leads because if there is a change in the septum and that part of the interior wall which is located near the septum that will be evident in the v1 and v2 but the extensive anterior ch uh, wall changes are represented in in the uh, chest lead v2 to v5 so the change in one avl v5 v6 are more related with left circumflex uh, artery v1 and v2 goes towards more towards the right coronary artery and changes in the v2 to v5 goes more in favor of uh, involvement of the left anterior descending artery